Ever wondered what neutral grounding resistance is? Let's step into the world of electrical engineering to explore this fascinating concept. Neutral grounding resistance, or NGR for short, is a technique often employed in three-phase electrical systems. It involves connecting the neutral point of the system to the earth using a resistor, hence the term resistance grounding. Picture this, the neutral point is grounded through a resistor, which we'll call R. The resistance may be a metallic resistor or liquid resistor. Metallic resistors do not change with time and practically require no maintenance. However, a metallic resistor is slightly inductive and this poses a problem with overhead lines exposed to lightning. Liquid resistors are free from this disadvantage. The value of R is crucial in this setup. It can't be too low or else the earth fault current becomes too large, making the system similar to a solid grounding system. But if R is too high, the system conditions resemble an ungrounded neutral system. The value of R is carefully chosen to limit the earth fault current to a safe value, yet still allow the operation of the earth fault protection system. In practice, that value of R is selected that limits the earth fault current to two times the normal full load current of the alternator or transformer. Now let's delve into the advantages and disadvantages of this system. So what are the pros and cons of using neutral grounding resistance? Let's start with the advantages. First off, by adjusting the value of the resistance R, we can minimize arcing grounds. This means we can control the sparks that fly around when an electrical fault occurs, making our system safer. Second, the presence of the earthing resistance reduces the earth fault current. This is a big deal because a lower earth fault current means less interference with communication circuits and less interference means clearer, more efficient communication. Third, resistance earthing improves the stability of the system. That's right, it's like the anchor to our ship, keeping us steady amidst the stormy seas of electrical currents and voltages. Now let's look at the flip side. What are the disadvantages? First, the system neutral is displaced during earth faults. This means that the equipment has to be insulated for higher voltages. Imagine having to put on extra layers of clothing just because the weather might change. It's the same concept here. Second, this system is costlier than the solidly grounded system. It's like choosing between a regular coffee and a fancy latte. Both will give you a caffeine boost, but one is definitely more expensive. Third, a large amount of energy is produced in the earthing resistance during earth faults. Now, this might sound like a good thing, but sometimes it becomes difficult to dissipate this energy into the atmosphere. It's like having a party in a small room. The more people you invite, the hotter it gets, and pretty soon, it becomes uncomfortable. But where exactly do we use this system? Let's find out. And now, where would we typically use the neutral grounding resistance? Great question. The application of neutral grounding resistance, or NGR, is actually quite specific. This system is often employed in situations where the operating voltages range between 2.2 kV and 33 kV. But that's not all. In addition to these voltage parameters, the power source capacity also plays an important role. For an NGR system to be effective, the power source capacity should be more than 5000 kVA. This is because NGR is designed to limit the magnitude of earth fault current in higher voltage and capacity systems, ensuring that the earth fault current is kept to a safe value and allowing the operation of the earth fault protection system. So, that's the neutral grounding resistance for you. Remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.